Hi, viewers. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Jana. I'm a sex researcher, professor of human sexuality at NYU, and your regular daily scoper on things related to sexual health, sex ed, sex science. And today, <clears throat> I have something very special for you. I'm at this kind of a two-day event uh, that's sex party at night and workshops and sex education during the day. And I was, uh, I taught a workshop on hooking up healthy earlier. And then one of my friends, Atrina, taught uh, a workshop on non-monogamy and kind of designing open relationships. So we're gonna open some relationships here. <laughs> Hello everyone, hi, hi, hi. If you think this is going to be fun and interesting to other people, please swipe left. If you're on iOS device, swipe up. If you're on Android and invite your followers, invite some people, please don't speak Turkish or I will have to block you. It's not a conference, it's just, it's an event called Wonderland and you can find information about it on wonderlandnewyork.com. Okay, pussy open, bye-bye. All right, so invite your followers. Hi, Howard and Velmud, good to see you. You've never been in an open relationship? Well, we can sort of talk about that with the Trina. Um, hold on. There we go. Um, can you just kind of keep it down? We're trying. Sorry, we're trying to do a little show on Periscope for a second. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hello. <laughs> Hi Trina. Hi. Um, so, tell, tell us a little bit about you. Who you are. What you're doing. Sure. Um, so I'm a sex and relationship um, educator, coach, and. Um, researcher. Right now my primary focus is around non-traditional sexualities and um, non-traditional relationship styles. Uh, I pr particularly focus on non-monogamy uh, around relationships and things. So what I really like to do is look at open relationships, non-traditional, non-monogamous relationships, and uh, help people design their own relationships to meet their own needs because everybody has different needs for non-monogamy and different ways they like to practice it. So I like meeting people where they are and working from there. Cool, yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of create open relationships in, right? And please let us know if you have any questions. Her name is Atrina. Mm -hmm. Atrina. Yes. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, she doesn't have a website or a Twitter account right now, so... I Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon. Coming She's soon the working works. on it. <laughs> um, for those of you just joining in, uh, my name is Dr. Jana. Hi there. My name is Dr. Jana. If you don't follow Dr. Jana, I hope you click that Perry buddy in the corner and follow me because we do daily scopes on things related to sexuality. Yes, that's true. Atrina, yes. Um, they're all saying nice to meet you. So oh. hi, uh, welcome everyone. And does um, bring her over for dinner. <laughs> That's my husband saying come home for dinner. Oh nice. Baby, I'm coming, I'm coming. So um, how do you handle STDs and multiple relationships? Um, so in open relationships, um, there was actually a study done that found that people who were in uh, what presumably monogamous relationships and had cheated on their partners were more likely to transmit HIV, or HIV and other STIs among their partners than people who were in ethical, consensual, non-monogamous relationships. So one of the main tenets of non-monogamy, consensual and ethical non-monogamy, is this idea of communication and all parties being aware of things that affect other parties within those relationships. Um, even people who have very few relationship agreements often will have agreements with condom usage and um, STD management, STI management. Um, and people who are in non-monogamous relationships that are consensual and ethical tend to be more vigilant about getting tested. They're more likely to use condoms. They're more likely to use gloves during uh, manual sexual stimulation. So people who are practicing consensual and ethical non-monogamy tend to be a little bit better about sexual health than people who are not and cheat on their partners. Um, so what are some different types of, I guess, not non-monogamous rules that you often see? Sure. So um, there's different areas of non-monogamy, right? It's kind of a broad situation. It's a really broad topic. Uh, so for example, there are um, 
people who are swingers. So oftentimes swingers will have sexual non-exclusivity, but will have emotional and romantic exclusivity with their partner. So they'll have a primary partner with whom they're in a romantic relationship, and then they'll have sex outside of that partnership with multiple people or one person at a time or whatever, um, and but they don't have an emotional or romantic relationship with the other people outside of that core couple. There's also other forms such as uh, polyamory, and there's different forms of polyamory as well. So some people in polyamory will have multiple simultaneous romantic um, and sexual relationships with people. Um, some of them will have a primary relationship. Some people don't identify as having a primary relationship, like somebody, for example, they're married to or um, considered to be their boyfriend or girlfriend, and everybody else is, you know, considered a lower tier. Some people do practice that, some people don't. Um, there is the idea of polyfidelity, which is, um, you know, there's a core unit of people that are, I wouldn't say monogamous, but they're exclusive with each other, but maybe instead of two people, there are three, or maybe four, or more. Generally two or three are the ones that, or I'm sorry, three or four are the ones that last a little, you know, for longer periods of time. It's easier to manage a few, fewer people than there are to these larger networks. Um, but in terms of different rules, so some people have, you know, no romantic attachment rules. Swingers, for example, will have that. Is that, someone was asking, is that hard to, to maintain? Is that a hard rule to kind of actually implement? Is what rule? Which one? Uh, no emotional attachments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so some people place specific rules to mitigate that. For example, you can only have sex with people, um, you know, once, or you can only have sex with people every few, you know, every six months you can only have sex with them, or you can only have sex with them a total of this many times, or you can only have sex with them when I'm there, present in the activity. Um, yeah, and no kissing, says someone else, exactly. Right, no kissing, exactly, situation, no dates, like it's just you go to a sex party, you have sex with them, and then you go home with your partner. Um, so yeah, sometimes that can be a little bit tricky, uh, especially because when, um, you know, when sexuality happens, when people, um, you know, get really connected to each other in whatever form, emotions sometimes do um, get really connected and people do develop romantic attractions to the people that they're hooking up with, the people that they're spending time with. Um, so that's why some pe for some people swinging really works because they're, they can detach very easily from romantic and sexual connections and some people find it to be challenging to the point where swinging doesn't work for them and instead they um, go the route of having multiple ongoing simultaneous romantic relationships. All right, so for, uh, for people joining in kind of late, um, hi, welcome to Dr. Jana Scope. Uh, this is a channel where we have conversations about sexuality, uh, sex education, sexual health, or so, and sex science, because I'm a sex scientist and I um, teach human sexuality at NYU. And right now I'm at this event called wonderlandnewyork.com, or that's where you can find them, Wonderland. NewYork.com, which is basically a two-day event uh, where in, in the evening there's a sex party and during the day there were a number of different educational uh, workshops on all sorts of things like fire play and electric play and non-monogamy and casual sex and all sorts of things. Available, it's actually WonderlandNewYork.com. Yeah, and right now we are chatting with Atrina who is um, who's a sex educator and just taught a class on non-monogamy. So that's what we're chatting about. So if you don't follow Dr. Jana, I hope you click on that Perry buddy in the corner down there and follow Dr. Jana. And thanks everyone who invited your followers. So Bo invited people, so that's pretty awesome. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you stick around. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna flip this around again and have some more questions for Trina. Um, someone was asking, how do you get started on open relationships? Oh, and hold on, before that. They're absolutely not for everyone. Open relationships are not for everyone. So just because it's, you know, just because it's out there or just because we're talking about that or just because it's good for someone doesn't mean it's good for everyone. So um, only do what works for you. Her screen name doesn't exist. She doesn't scope, unfortunately. She doesn't even have a Twitter and she's working on her website. So there you go. 
Yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. I just I just graduated from my master's program um, in, in social work, focusing on non-traditional relationships. So I'm kind of in the process of building and um, and things like that. So a website is coming soon, I promise. And hopefully, Dr. Jana will have me back <laughs> once oh, I do yeah. have something to promote. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the question was, how do you get started on um, opening a relationship? So. I would say that there are a few kind of steps to go in. First of all, um, really looking introspectively and thinking about what it is that you want. Um, what are your core values? What is it that you're trying to get out of relationships? What are, um, you know, what are, what are the reasons that you're wanting to open this relationship, right? And there are, I mean, that, that's different for every single person, but I think personal introspection is the first step. The second step would be to come to your partner, and if you have one, um, or if not, whatever potential partners you have in the future, and discuss with them your goals, your you know what what you want to get ultimately out of non-monogamy or open relationships. One thing that's interesting though is a lot of people will say specifically, I want it to look exactly like this. I want a triad relationship with one man and one woman where we're equally in the relationship and we're raising a children raising children together and we have this sort of thing, right? Um, but what they're looking for by having that particular goal, I think, is the important thing to discuss because not everyone has the same ultimate end goal. Um, but maybe there are different strategies for meeting your particular goals. So, for example, looking at um, look, basically coming to the conversation, saying, "Here's what I want ultimately. Ultimately, I want the I want to have more than one romantic partner. Maybe one partner wants to have a sort of poly fidelity situation where they have three partners and that's it. Nobody has any outside partners. The other partner wants the ability to have." whomever be a partner that they, you know, they meet somebody, they want to be able to have them as a partner if they want. Um, so instead of saying, coming to the conversation by saying, I want this specifically, the end, are you on board or not? And instead saying, I want the result of these goals, these um, rules that I'm implementing to have this effect. And instead looking at the effect and try to find different strategies for meeting that end goal. Someone was saying, don't, uh don't bring it up when you start dating. He'll be interested in you for all the wrong reasons. What's what's your take on that? I mean, I think it would kind of depend. Um, th there is a, a trope that is unfortunately common among people who identify as polyamorous or in open relationships, um, especially on dating websites and things, where they have it in their profile, I'm polyamorous. And what people who don't know about polyamory, what they read that as is, um, I like casual sex with anyone I'm indiscriminate, right? Uh, which is not the case <laughs> most of the time. Maybe sometimes, but most of the time it's not. And um, so, but at the same time, if you if you are polyamorous and say if you have other relationships and you start dating somebody um, and they are expecting you to be monogamous because that's the, you know, that's typically what happens is people meet, they date, they become exclusive and they are monogamous. That's the expectation. So by going against the expectation and going along this different route, by kind of, by not being upfront about that initially, or at least very, very early on, uh, you're kind of leading a person on to believing that there is potential for monogamy. When if there's not, that could be very heartbreaking to the other person if you've been dating for six months and then, oh, by the way, <laughs> You know, there is there are differing ideas around, you know, is this something that you bring up before the first date even? Um, I am a big proponent of that, actually, because uh, then there's no false pretenses. There's no um, question of whether or not this is going to happen. It's this is how this is who I am. This is how I am. If you would like to find out more, if you'd like to get to know me better, then right. we can go from there. Yeah, as Teresa was just saying, yeah, I hate when a guy pretends he wants a long-term relationship when, when in fact he doesn't and if you don't specify those things from the beginning then yeah it could create unrealistic expectations for sure exactly. um, is this more readily accepted outside the US um, I think it's actually less accepted outside of the US <laughs> some, some European countries are probably more open to it yeah uh, some no northern European countries but mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I think some of the, the major metropolitan areas in the United States are some of the big hubs. Um, specifically, San Francisco, I know, is a very big hub for polyamory. So is New York City. And I think Washington, D.C. has a pretty good population also. Um, I've heard uh, Colorado is starting to 
develop more of a polyamorous reputation, maybe because um, things are a little bit more liberal there than in other states. But, but there are swingers everywhere. Yeah. Like, the swinger world is very, very, like, it's all over the country. Yeah. So the poly, a little less so. Yeah. Um, Indiana has some too. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it's all over for sure. And of course, the bigger the city, the more people you have. Right. Um, do, you have a, do you have a practice? I'm in Prospect Heights. Do you, do you see clients? Or do I, you... Yeah, I'm developing that as we speak, actually. I don't know if there's like a private message situation you can do with Jana um, after the periscope. We can... Um, periscope. Periscope, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's new. Forgive her. Sorry, I'm learning. Um, but yes, that is something that I'm developing. Absolutely. Um, oh, Kinney earlier was asking, um, what websites would you recommend for people, like swinger websites or poly websites? For people to go and check out um, for more information or for meeting people I don't know maybe either sure so um, I am a big proponent of Franklin Vo's um, more than two.com uh, he wrote a book with Eve Rickert uh, called more than two which is really um, a kind of a how-to manual on um, ethical polyamory now again specifically that is polyamory not that doesn't really um, include the swinger side of things or other sorts of um, non-monogamous relationships um, that book excellent his website that accompanies it more than two.com is also really good and has a lot of um, really good materials on there to on how to disclose to partners, how to navigate multiple relationships, how to uh, manage jealousy and those sort of things. Um, another book that I would recommend is Tristan Terramino's Opening Up because that tends to have that generally has a more um, more variety in terms of like the different kinds of open relationships. Yeah. Um, uh, I think there's another workshop starting. <laughs> starting here in a yeah. few minutes, right? Um, so we don't have too much time left, but yeah, so so more than two and opening up are good resources for learning about non-monogamy, especially the poly versions of that. Um, and uh, I think Swing Lifestyle, someone suggested it, is a good swinger website for finding people. You can also uh, find people on Cassidy. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different ones. Oh, are you going to the sex ed conference in Jersey? Uh, oh, that's soon, right? Yeah, that's coming up soon. Oh, I wasn't planning on it, but maybe. Yeah, another good book is The Ethical Slut. Yeah, thanks. Yes, Cassidy. Um, that, thanks, Valmo. Actually, I think it's with a K. Cassidy with with uh, with a K. Uh, this yeah. relationship idea has killed a young generation. Uh, I doubt that, that is the case in Boy Tale. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, Valmo was saying why. Why is it called non-monogamy when it has nothing to do with um, marriage? Yeah, it's 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 just not very accurate, but it is what it is. Um, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. So if you came in late, hi, my name is Dr. Jana. I'm a sex researcher, professor of human sexuality at NYU, and I do daily scopes on things related to sexual health, sex science, sex education. We do daily chats here on Periscope, um, and we talk about sexuality of all kinds. So if you would like that to be part of your Periscope experience and you don't follow Dr. Jana, please click on that Perry buddy in the corner down there and click on my name and then follow me. Um, um, I was just talking with Atrina, who is a sex educator who taught a class. I know there's a there's a class coming up. Yeah. May I? No, may I draw you guys? Oh no, we gotta go. So, <laughs> there's a live drawing class. That... While you're sitting there. Oh, while we're sitting here. Sure, oh. I think if we get yeah, but if you can, if you like. <laughs> Someone, someone's gonna draw us. <laughs> Yay! There's a the, the next workshop starting up is a live drawing class. So, hmm. um, just because. Just because. Then I get to listen to her exam. Okay, sounds good. Uh, can you really get a PhD in this? So my PhD is in developmental psychology, but I did study uh, casual sex, uh, non-monogamy, and sexual orientation. That's what my uh, research during my PhD was, and uh, so. Katrina, what was your master's in and from where? Uh, my master's is in social work from Columbia University. Um, and while they don't have a specific non-monogamy minor or anything, um, the majority, actually all of my um, research projects and theses and papers and things were around atypical sexualities, non-traditional relationships, um, and things of that nature. Sex and relationships on the fringe. <laughs> okay.
Holly Drory. I like that, Howard is saying. Holly what? Holly Drory, that they're drawing both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Heather, that's pretty awesome. From from Widener, yeah. Um, Dr. <laughs> Chad was like, just landed in here, and I was like, oh shit, Dr. Jana changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is not Dr. Jana that you're looking at right now. That no. is a Trina. Um, Okay, any other questions that you have for, for Atrina regarding non-monogamy, non-monogamous relationships, and that kind of stuff? Um, what else What else can we, can we talk about that we didn't talk about? Uh, In a two-second soundbite, I don't even know. <laughs> but I can definitely come <laughs> oh, okay. back anytime you Poly, want. No, no, talk, uh, let's say poly versus cuckold. Poly versus cuckold. What's yeah. Cuckold? <laughs> <laughs> so a cuckold is um, when... A typically heterosexually matched couple, so a man and a woman, um, are in a relationship, um, and the woman will have sex with another man, um, either like around the the male partner or in front of him or behind, not really behind his back, but it's, there's an acknowledgement that the man knows that um, he that that his partner, his female partner, is having sex with other men. I think oftentimes this as a fetish typically involves some sort of like humiliation around that. Um, so like, the, you know, um, the woman might say, you know, like, oh yeah, I was fucking this other guy and he was so much better than you. And like, how do you feel about, you or know, small cock humiliation. Exactly. Like his that. cock was so much bigger than yours and whatever. Right. Um, so, and then the general typical term is actually just a woman who has had sex with another man while being in a relationship with that with a different man. Um, but I think it's not really typically used that way colloquially. Colloquially, it's used more in terms of this fetish. So um, somebody could be uh, in a polyamorous relationship and cuckold their partner, um, but it's not, polyamory is not by definition cuckolding their partner because there's no like, there doesn't need to be that level of, hum of um, humiliation or, um, you know, the, the husband doesn't have to necessarily watch the wife and her male partner so. um, do the things. So, it can't, they, can, they can overlap or not. That's basically the answer to that. Okay, so someone's saying, I'm new to this, but open to understand. Why would you have a partner if you want to be with someone else? Um, well, okay, so, for ex here, here's um, a little analogy that I would like. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Ladies, uh, this really picks up everything. Sorry. Thanks. We'll be we'll be done soon. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so here's an analogy. You um, have a child, and you love that child with all of your heart. You this child is the most important thing to you, right? Um, if you loved that child so much, why would you have another child? Because you would have to split your love between two children, right? Well, no, it's called magic math, right? You, um, if you have one child, you love that child with all of your heart. If you have another child, you also love that child with all of your heart. As they grow up, maybe they're not children anymore, they develop their different personalities. Maybe one child is really good at computers, and maybe the other child is really good at helping you navigate emotions around certain things. Maybe one child is really good at helping you with your finances. Maybe the other child loves to come over and cook for you. You know, so you would, you would love your children children, no matter how many you had, with the same intensity, the same love, right? The same amount of love. You don't diminish your love for them. Um, maybe you like different things about them. Maybe they serve different purposes in your life as they grow up and they're no longer children. Um, you know, maybe you like them for different things, uh, but it doesn't mean that the love is any different, right? There's no lack of love. Yeah. Hold on. Flip the there we go. Uh, I think that's a great analogy when it comes to polyamory in particular. But then you have the people who are pretty happy loving one child, but they just want to have, uh, or I, I don't play have with a... Kids. Hmm? <laughs> play with other kids. They want to play with other people's kids. Yes, exactly. So more of the swinger type relationship. So you have this long-term, you know, very loving, committed relationship with one person, but you just like some novelty. You want sex with other people and, you know, that's... That's what a lot of people want too. So um, that's one of the reasons why you might want a non-monogamous relationship. Um, yeah, uh, I missed a couple of things. How is this really love if both don't agree? 
Hmm? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Teresa. Uh, what about non-sex but attention? What do you mean, Lakshmi? I'm not sure what you mean by that either. <laughs> um, there are a couple of other things that I wanted to address, and I'm, um, they're escaping me right now. Um, yeah, it's not for everyone. Oh, Dog was saying, um, uh, God, I forgot your name. Damn it, I asked you earlier today and I forgot it already. Um, you, need, you need two very sort of emotionally um, stable and mature people. Holly, Holly, yes. Oh, you, need, you need emotionally sort of mature people. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and it really has to do with kind of negotiating the bounds of your relationship with your partner or partners. Um, I was saying that, sorry. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it really, it really has to do with um, it, if one partner, for example, uh, believes in having a monogamous relationship, they want to be monogamous and they expect to be monogamous and they think they're monogamous and the other partner um, is saying, no, I want to have multiple partners and they do, that's not called polyamory, that's not called an open relationship, what that's called is cheating. So it, what, what defines the difference between cheating and an open relationship or non-monogamous relationship is an agreement between the people in the relationship. So, um, and not even just specifically are we open or not, but the specific areas of their non-monogamy and their exclusivity or non-exclusivity. So. All right. I think. You know, a new a new workshop is, is coming up, so I'm just gonna flip the screen and ask you to take some screenshots Yay. and then tweet them at me. So I have we have something with Atrina here on scope. Um, thank you everyone for oh, being for here. I know, I know you can't see the hearts, but that's what happens in, on scope. People send you hearts, so thank you for all the hearts. Aww. Thanks for all the questions and comments, for being understanding, even those who are like, this is not for me, but you're, you know, it's cool if it is for you. Absolutely, nothing sexual ever is for everyone. Um, so, except maybe consent. Uh, <laughs> but aside from consent, you don't need to do anything else really um, that you don't want to do. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, uh, if you think this would have been interesting or useful for other people, please invite your followers, and they can they can watch um, they can watch the replay. But we'll have Atrina back. She's uh, she's a friend. I get to see her uh, on a somewhat regular basis. I know our clothes match. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, we totally have the same color dresses. Yeah. So. Um, if you don't follow Dr. Jana, I hope you do, and I will. I will be back tomorrow at some point with something. Um, yeah, cool. And thanks for having me. Yeah, you can't quite find the Trina anywhere just yet. Not yet, but it's coming. But it's it's coming, coming. I promise. <laughs> it's coming. All right, everyone. Love you all. Bye. Oh, it won't let me leave. Okay.